I want to speak to you for the remaining few moments concerning the difference that the Holy Spirit makes. The Holy Spirit makes all the difference. If you're taking notes write this down. The Holy Spirit makes all the difference. In the Old Testament God placed Adam the first human being and Eve into his presence called Garden of Eden. But in the New Covenant God places his presence the Holy Spirit within humanity 2.0. Us born again believers. God actually puts his presence inside of us. When he created humanity he placed humanity within his presence but when he saved us he placed his presence within us amen and the holy spirit is not an aura he's not an attitude he's not a mood he's not a atmosphere he is a person but he is a person that you can experience he is a person that you can his power can be tangible where you can experience it on your own body where you can have certain things that happen to you because of that and though we're not chasing experiences but we also don't reject them we don't follow experiences we follow the Lord but you cannot separate God of the Bible from his power God is not a topic you study in the university God is almighty when I went to Tanzania a few years ago you know I studied about lions I've, I've watched lions on movies and TVs and uh, seen pictures of lions was always fascinated with lions it's totally another when you face one I, when you look at one in the eyes right behind me you see a video as well when actually one passes by your car the fear of God hits you so hard you start confessing your sin I mean it's a total different experience than the one you see in your room painted and you have a photo of it's one thing to study the Holy Spirit to read the Holy Spirit is totally another when he encounters you you can't explain it there is no words to explain it there is no Greek or Hebrew to explain what happens it's just you just have to experience it there's certain things you just have to experience it and I want to challenge you today don't want to talk about the Holy Spirit but nothing comes close to what can happen to your life when you encounter him and he's not available to pastors preachers and bishops only he's available to every believer amen just like the air air does not discriminate everyone can take in you can take in of the Holy Spirit you can receive him in Jesus name amen the verse I'm going to read today or this, the story of the scripture that I'm going to take is from the story of the ark in the Old Testament in first Samuel chapter 5 we see that the ark of God and the ark of God is like a God box it was just this box that God told Moses to make and then God said he will dwell actually on this on this ark and Moses made it and eventually Israel sinned against God and they decided to use an ark as like a good luck charm they brought it to a battle that they didn't have a relationship with God but they thought this will save them they started to shout and the Philistines got intimidated nevertheless Israel got conquered and Philistines conquered Israel and they actually conquered God box Philistines bring this God box into the temple of their God and they placed it next to their God Dagon and they made a very bad mistake because though you can put God with other gods all other gods have to bow to him the next day this God he fell and Philistines you know were like okay they helped their God see anytime you got to help your own God it's not worth serving him they helped their own God get on his feet he got on his feet and the next day so the first day their God Dagon fall the second day God <laughs> broke him to pieces so Dagon not only fell he got decapitated literally all of his body parts were broken and Philistines got the point like the God of Israel is not to be messed with and so they took quickly the ark out and they kept it in their land then plagues broke out tumors broke out and then they finally got rid of the ark of God and send it back if you're taking notes write down the first the first thing that I want to share with you is whatever the Holy Spirit breaks you are empowered to remove whatever the Holy Spirit breaks you are empowered to remove see just like Philistines all of us when we get saved we bring the Holy Spirit inside of our life but many of us we have different gods we have erected in our own heart it might not be Dagon it might be jealousy it might be witchcraft it might be generational curse of barrenness or poverty it could be different things that are erected in our life and when you bring the Holy Spirit inside by the virtue of his presence he doesn't remove the bad he defeats it which empowers you to remove it 
I want you to notice the ark broke Dagon. It didn't remove Dagon. It didn't take him out of the temple. Many Christians realize, they don't realize this is when I come to Jesus Christ, God forgives me of my sin. He breaks the power of the sin but he gives me the power now to remove the presence of the sin to change my habits develop new relationships and to begin to fight back against every power that held me hostage the presence of God cannot be controlled Philistines thought they can control the presence of God God cannot be controlled God is not a charm God is not a vending machine. If you punch the numbers right, you get what you want. You don't get what you want with God. You either get God and He gets you or you get nothing. God is not your ex. God is not a machine you can get in and just do. God can't be figured out. He can only be trusted. He can lead you. The Bible says don't lean on your understanding but in everything trust in God. I want to encourage you today not to control God. Let Him lead you. God doesn't even control us. He gives us power to control ourselves. The other part that I want to mention in here is that God cannot cohabitate. God would not cohabitate with other gods. Now He can. He just won't. Meaning you can temporarily put God together with astral projection. You can temporarily put God together with dream catchers. You can temporarily put God together with chants and daily tarot cards and angel destiny cards and spells and crystals and necromancy and charms and superstitions, Ouija boards and occult books and burning incense to cleanse the house from the bad spirits. You can put God together and that's what many people do. They add Jesus to whatever crap that they've been doing. And in the beginning it's fine because I understand we don't know much truth we're ignorant it's fine what I just want to let you know is that God will not stay in the place that will force him to cohabitate with other gods other gods will have to go down and begin believers a lot of times they do that today what they do is they they get a lot of the witch talk they get a lot of the witchcraft and they say like well and there is Jesus and everything else God does not play well with other gods he doesn't but it's okay when you start like that what I just want to let you know he will begin to defeat other gods he will defeat other problems in your life but he will ask you to clean the garbage meaning to remove that stuff my uh, I have a dog named Jacko Jacko is very jealous of anything that represents an animal Lana one time bought a, this thing called llama and I have to be careful to pronounce not Lana but llama llama so she bought llama and we brought llama into the house put it on the top of the refrigerator and when Jacko saw llama spirit of jealousy entered in he was jumping on that fridge every single day crying and yelling it got so bad that my when my wife went to Poland for two weeks Jacko was crying all the time so then I switched llama and then of course I irritated him more I took llama and I petted I said good boy good boy provoke that guy to jealousy so finally on one Thursday stream I decided to give Jacko to throw llama in the battle with Jacko and so I gave Jacko an opportunity to defend himself and this is exactly what came out of llama Jacko pretty much took that llama he usually just takes the eyes out of any fake animal and just leaves the animal he usually just takes the eyes out so I guess they won't be able to see him or something and so but with this animal he tore it to pieces he literally stood there almost like I'm the God in this house nobody else beside me you know and it was as I was reflecting on that that is a totally not spiritual illustration but as I was reflecting on that honestly anytime you would put something put a llama in your life you will provoke God to jealousy all you have to do is give God access to it when Jesus entered the house of Zacchaeus there was a lot of llamas there there was a lot of gods there greed lying cheating and this presence came in and God starts falling jealousy starts falling greed starts falling and Zacchaeus says Jesus didn't even say anything the virtue of his presence 
caused other gods to be decapitated caused other issues to fall flat before Jesus and Zacchaeus says Jesus I will no longer lie I will no longer cheat I will no longer do that but I want to challenge you you can't defeat other gods without God let me say that again you can't defeat other gods without God you can't defeat jealousy without Jehovah you can't defeat greed without God you can't defeat nightmares without God Night, nightmare paralysis you can't defeat it without God you can't defeat pornography without God you have to bring God in if you want other gods to go down so many people say I will clean my temple first and then I'll come to God it would be foolish to go to a barber after you had a haircut it would be foolish to go through a car wash after you washed your car. My friend, God is not intimidated by your gods. He just says, when I come in and they go down, can you get them out? When I come in and they go down, can you get them out? Hey! You're like, but I can't get them out. Let's, let the preacher pray for you. Let the pastor pray for you. Let your husband pray for you. But get them out. You can get them out. I want to challenge you today the presence of God can't be controlled the presence of God won't cohabitate with other gods and the presence of God will conquer other gods you can't fight your demons on your own you gotta bring God in but when you bring him in he will decapitate he will defeat he will destroy but he will leave some job for you Doug Jacko did when he destroyed Lama he left some work for us which was the cleanup work deliverance defeats but discipleship and discipline cleans up the temple listen deliverance defeats discipleship gets rid of the garbage and that's why you can't land everything with deliverance but that's where everything starts and you can come as you are but I want to tell you God will go to war and every God will suffer a head trauma but after they are defeated you have to begin to start renewing your mind and changing your habits can somebody say amen number two thing I want you to notice is the Holy Spirit will make no difference in someone who is indifferent to Him. The first mention of the ark we, that I highlighted is the one where Philistines took the ark in and they made Him be with other gods. And God defeated those gods but Philistines unfortunately got rid of God. They didn't get rid of gods, they got rid of the, uh, the God of Israel. And that's why I'm saying is that when God comes in he begins to defeat and challenge his lies and sins. You don't get rid of God, you get rid of lies and sins. But the second thing I want you to notice is Philistines sent the ark back. The best they knew how. They got some cows, they put a card, like a wheelbarrow, like a trailer, pretty much like a trailer, connected it to cows, put this God box on the card because that's the best they knew. They didn't know that you don't put a God box on the card. You have to put it on the, the priests of Levites and priests and they put this on the card and then the cows went back to Israel. There's a tragedy that happened. Somebody touched it, looked at it, few people died and then this guy Levite, Abinadab, he takes the ark inside of his house. Now Josephus who is the Jewish historian, he says that Abinadab was a Levite who was known for his righteousness and deemed appropriate keeper of the ark. For Samuel chapter 7 verses 1 and 2, it talks about this guy named Abinadab. And I want you to stay with me for just a second. I'll give you just a short little teaching. Abinadab had few sons. The oldest son was Eleazar. 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 One of his sons was also Uzzah. For 20 years, the ark lived in Abinadab's house. All of his sons were around the ark. They got used to it, took it for granted and became indifferent to it. In fact, for 20 years, nothing happened in Abinadab's house because of the ark. Imagine the ark caused gods to fall in Philistines, but nothing is happening. We don't see one mention. We don't see nothing supernatural. We don't see nothing spiritual taking place. In fact, what we see is indifference. Because guess who puts the ark on the card 20 years later? Abinadab's children. Uzzah was one of them. Uzzah and the other brother of Uzzah was actually guiding the ark. Where did they get the idea that God box 
could be transported through a trailer when God clearly stated in his word it should be transported through the shoulders of his servants that tells me that Uzzah got so accustomed to nothing happening around God box he honestly developed irreverence started as an indifference became irreverence which then cost him his life and when the oxen stumbled Uzzah without any caution thought goes in to help the ark that shows to us complete irreverence which was a result of 20 years of indifference they had it in the house like a microwave like a fridge you get used to it you touch it you clean it no sacredness it did nothing bad nothing good it was just there it reminds me of a lot of Christians who have the Holy Spirit inside but don't have intimacy reverence and after a while we develop indifference and indifference does not mean we hate reject it just means that he's there I'm here he does nothing he seems to be so quiet there for the past 20 years he hasn't said anything he hasn't done anything he doesn't do anything is he even there maybe he died maybe it's just an idea that he's there and we develop a diff indifference there will be no difference in our life caused by the Spirit if we are indifferent to the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us indifference to the Holy Spirit will lead to irreverence of the Holy Spirit every irreverence lack of reverence grieving quenching does not start there it starts with being indifferent I really believe the greatest insult to the Holy Spirit is not your sin as much as your indifference and when I say yours I mean myself as well it's to live your life as though he doesn't exist pray as though he doesn't live in you walk every day as though he is not real now we know he's real theologically we know that in our doctrine same way that Uzzah knew that this is a God box but the fact that there was a God inside there there was a God's presence that was there Uzzah completely disconnected these two ideas and church I want to draw everybody back my desire is not to shame you is not to guilt you but to stir up a slight appetite that you will begin to become curious and fascinated by the God the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you and that you and I will repent from the sin of indifference repent from the sin of irreverence and we will cultivate hunger communion and longing for the person of the Holy Spirit that you will not pray without talking to the Holy Spirit that there will not be one day without thoughts affections and attention given to the Holy Spirit and as you begin to not be indifferent he will begin to make a difference in your life he will make a difference in your work. He will make a difference in your family. He will make a difference with your speech and with your attitude. He will make a difference in your finances. He will make a difference. You will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You will command demons and they will go because the Holy Spirit makes all the difference. Can the church say amen? Proximity to the Holy Spirit does not matter as much as your passion for the Holy Spirit. You know Uzzah was a Levite but it did not matter. Uzzah did not have a passion for the Holy Spirit. Being a Pentecostal doesn't mean much if you're not a passionate one. Being charismatic does not mean much if you're not burning. Speaking in tongues does not mean much if you don't love the Holy Spirit. You can get the gift of tongues. You can even have other gifts but if you don't have the desire if you don't have the delight and the passion my friend it won't matter much and I want to encourage us today that just because we had past experiences with the Holy Spirit it does not mean the Holy Spirit is committed to us if we're no longer chasing Him the Holy Spirit is not committed to any denomination 
is not committed to any groups of people he's only committed to those who chase him the moment people lose interest for him he moves on and the person he begins to use next he doesn't ask the person he used before for permission I remember meeting with the president of the university this week and we were discussing how there are movements of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit moved and they became controversial and then they became so sound and balanced but the Holy Spirit's moving is no longer there and we discussed even few movements and, and I was mentioning to him how the Holy Spirit does not look at your status. He does not look even at your education level. He doesn't look even at your past where you've been what you've done what your driver's record because there are people among us here today we're like Lord thank you for not looking at my past thank you for not judging me based on my weaknesses and what I've done because what Holy Spirit is after is your passion which will result in purity God said to Saul I found a man and he said this after my heart meaning this man is chasing me this man is after me and God's like that man is what I'm gonna use that man I will pull back from the sheepfold and I will put him in a throne my friend if God will notice that you are after his heart God will pull you out from where you are at and he will promote you and he will give you a new measure of grace he will give you a new measure of anointing seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else shall be added early will I seek you David says I will long for you David said I want to stir your appetite today don't be an Uza. don't be a person who's familiar with God don't be the person who's familiar with the Holy Spirit that you take him for granted even when the word Holy Spirit is mentioned something should stir inside of you there has to be an emotion an affection oh they're talking about my friend they're talking about the person that I love they're talking about the person that lives inside of me they're talking about the person that helps me in the dark night in the valley of the shadow of death they're talking about the person that brought healing to my body they're talking about the Holy Spirit if we live with indifference it leads to irreverence and irreverence always leads to death of intimacy Uza touches and dies anytime our whole life is built on indifference and irreverence there will be a death of intimacy but I want to tell you today God has brought you here to resurrect your intimacy with the Holy Spirit my desire that after this message tomorrow morning you will wake up earlier and spend time with the Holy Spirit my desire is before you go to sleep tonight that you will talk to the Holy Spirit that you will recognize you have a God box inside of your spirit called the Holy Spirit to treat it reverently not to be afraid but to have reverence and I'm finishing on this the Holy Spirit will transform those who take him in look at Philistines absolutely no regard no understanding God destroyed their gods they got rid of him Uzzah 20 years of irreverence Cause accustomed to it death of intimacy touches it and dies and there's a guy there his name is Obed Edom he's actually a Gerite he's from Philistine he is not technically like an Israelite he's not a Levite from what we see he's Obed Edom when Uzzah dies this would be a good moment to say oh no ark for my house I was like I'm not bringing guns I have children you know like I'm not bringing this this thing can kill people and Uzzah dies Obed Edom says come over here let's take him in he brings it into his house and the Bible says in three months God blesses Obed Edom's house so much that David gets the rumor Obed Edom is blessed in fact let me read to you because it's it's important to read this so David would not move the ark of the Lord with him into the city of David but David took it aside into the house of Obed Edom the Gerite the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed Edom the Gerite three months and the Lord blessed somebody say blessed come on somebody say Lord bless me and the Lord blessed Obed Edom so he blessed him and all his household now it was told to King David saying the Lord has blessed the house of Obed Edom and all belong and all that belongs to him watch this because of the ark of God 
because of the ark of God. Obed-Edom, the Gittite, gets so blessed by God that David gets a rumor that this ark killed Uzzah but blessed Obed-Edom. Because Uzzah was 20 years with it with no respect and honor. Obed-Edom was not a Levite, a Gittite but with a different heart. Three months in the Lord maybe. Two weeks with God. Does not know much but knows one thing. Holy Spirit good and I gotta love Him. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom because of the ark. God is ready to bless your family. God is ready to bless your marriage. God is ready to bless your life. But He says, I want you to have an attitude of gratitude and honor toward the Holy Spirit. He transforms Obed-Edom. This blessing was visible. This blessing was within few months. This blessing was because of the ark. And I love this because this blessing caused other people not to want Obed-Edom's blessing, but to want Obed-Edom's presence. This blessing produced a ministry, not materialism. Now I followed up with Chuck and few other people. It's very interesting because the moment, the moment David comes in and takes the ark back, he's like, man, I want this blessing. It's interesting to see this about Obed-Edom. Obed-Edom actually, it says that he becomes a gatekeeper in 1st Chronicles chapter 15 verse 18. It's like Obed-Edom, it says, I'm following wherever the ark went. I'm not staying where the blessing is. I'm staying where the blesser went. I'm attracted by the blesser. Therefore, I'll never be distracted by the blessing. I'm going where the ark went. I'm not staying what the, with, with what the ark has brought. He becomes the gatekeeper, like a watchman, like a security at the tabernacle. Then Obed-Edom becomes a musician, like a Levite. I get the question. He's a Gittite. How could Gittite become a Levite? Well, God will always churn somebody into somebody else who has the right heart. God will promote somebody into another place who has the right heart. Obed-Edom becomes the doorkeeper for the ark. So not only he's a gatekeeper, not only he's learning to play music, he's also a doorkeeper for the ark. Obed-Edom becomes a watchman for the south gate of the ark. And Obed-Edom and his sons, eight sons, become leaders and are over the storehouse, meaning like over the, the banking, the what funds come in for the ark. I'm surprised. This guy literally chased the ark wherever the ark went. And he says, every available position, what I can serve around the ark, count me in. And then he says, oh, and I got eight children. They're all signed up to serve. See, this is where you know you love the presence. When you always serve around the presence. Real blessing caused by God doesn't cause you to be materialistic. It causes you to be ministry minded. If the blessing caused you to lose ministry and become materialistic, my friend, that's your blessing, not His. Because the blessing of God makes you want to do things for God. Like Obed-Edom, he went and started serving around the temple. I want to challenge you today. The blessing of God makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. But please understand, it's the blessing of God. It's not a blessing of your degree. It's not a blessing of your job. It's not a blessing of your position. And it's not a blessing of you marrying that person or having those kids. It's not a blessing of you living in that house or driving that car. It's a blessing that comes directly from Him. There is a blessing that comes from Him. But God gives us a short secret. He says, if you take me in, I'll transform you. Take my presence in. Host my presence host my spirit i gave you the spirit treasure him value him host him communicate with him talk to him let him lead you let him guide you and god says and i'm gonna bless what concerns you now that blessing will look different for you than it is for me it will look different for you than it will look for david but one thing is going to be certain people on the outside will look at your life and they will say, they will not say well look at how smart you are they will say look at how blessed you are and they will want not the blessing but your blesser because David did not say, I want the blessing of Obed-Edom. He says, I want the ark that Obed-Edom has. Unfortunately, there was only one, one ark. But today the Holy Spirit that lives inside of me can live inside of you. The Spirit that lives inside of you, I also can know that Spirit inside of me. And every person can benefit from that Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content and this was a blessing to you, would you help us? 
and hit thumbs up so that it could help more people to discover this video. It costs you nothing, but it can go a long way to help with the algorithm. As well as if you're not subscribed to our channel, hit subscribe, click on the bell so that you can be reminded each time that we upload videos. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. If you're interested in learning more about HungryGen, our internship, our conferences, deliverance, and so many other things, go to HungryGen.com for more information. And as always, remember, better is not good enough, the best is yet to come.